Ugh. Hey, bud. All right, well. <laughs> Does oh, anybody else, look at how ridiculous this is. Does anybody else have, hold on, a 13 year old, come here. A 13 year old that is six inches taller than them? Hey. That's insane to me. Does anybody else have this? Oh, there's the dance. Ah! My channel now. <laughs> ah! Go subscribe to Mr. MC and Icebreaker because I'm a good mom. Hi guys, welcome back to another one. You have already experienced the chaos that is this household, and that is this channel in general. You've already seen it, but we are now semi-alone, and hopefully nobody makes another crazy little appearance, but we are going to do our favorite video every single month where we spin to find out what books I am putting on my TBR list for the month of March, which is insane to me that it is March because I feel like we were just having New Year's. Well, then I was sick for a month, so I guess I did lose like an entire month, but we are going to find out what we are putting on our TBR for March. And I did not complete my TBR last month, so we do not get to do any extra spins, unfortunately. Honestly, I didn't have, I mean, I think I read four books. So one of my worst reading months ever, actually, but like I've stated in the last like two videos, I was so deathly ill. That's so dramatic. I wasn't deathly ill. I was just ill. I was so ill that the thought of even like holding a book was just not happening. I swear to God, I slept for a straight week. It was crazy. I don't think I've slept that much, God, in the last 20 years as I did in this one week. I could not keep my eyes open. I was so weak. So a ton of reading didn't really happen in February, but that's okay because I am back and I am better than ever if I do say so myself. So we are going to spin to find our TBR. And I also realized that last month we forgot to hit the randomize button before we spun our wheel. So we're going to be sure to do that. So the only updates I have for you, this is actually a month where there were no changes besides, well, there actually was, I guess, no major changes to the way that the game is going to work this month. However, um, there are two extra shelves. <laughs> of course there are. Um, long story short, I kind of redid, maybe I should show you this corner. I think I might do that. I redid a corner of our guest room. So if you guys don't know, I do film in our guest room in our in-law suite, which is where like my office and stuff is and my library and my, you know, gym and my theater room and stuff is. So I did add a couple of extra bookshelves and I'm actually going to grab my phone and insert a little phone footage here because the number one question I get from you guys is what do I do with the books after I read them? So let me switch over to my phone and you can get some ridiculously shaky footage and I can answer that question before we spin. Okay, so welcome to my guest room, guys. So this is what you see. Sorry, it's a little shaky, but I'm just walking and recording. This is what you see when you come in. You guys are kind of used to this view from the TBR videos. You see this when you come in and spin. However, what you don't often see boop, 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 is when you turn this wall. So obviously my printer for my office. Um, and then these are new. So I do have, it's actually three extra shelves. This right here, how adorable is this, is what my son Dylan made when he was in like kindergarten. And he says his hero is his daddy because he helps people. I love that so much. Anyways, separate story. What you see right here, these three shelves, this is actually all the books that I've read and kept. If a book is above like a three star, a 2.75 star, and I think I would recommend it to friends and family, it goes on this shelf. If it's below that, or if it's something that I don't think that I would recommend to friends and family, I donate it either to the library or to a little free library around my area so that other people could take it and maybe they'll have a different opinion. But this shelf is a little spare, is a little bare right now because I have had several friends and family come over and pick off of it, borrowing books. But my aunt also had surgery and I brought her over a huge um, bag of books. So it's a little picked over right now. But to answer everybody's most common question, this is where books go once I've read them. So that's my two read shelf. So Separate story, but you guys ask it literally all the time, so I wanted to make sure you saw it. 
there you go. I hope that kind of answers your questions because I swear to God, every single time I do a video, the most common question is, what do you do with all your books you read? So there it is. It goes on my to be read shelf or it gets donated. So without further ado, let's do spin number one. We are going to open up screen record and hold on. What is that? Oh, geez. Okay. Screen record and say it with me. Wait the three seconds because we are what? Professionals. And now we are going to randomize the wheel. So say goodbye to the way the wheel currently looks. All right. This is the wheel that we are going to use this month. Looks good. All right. One, two, three. What is that? Shelf six. Okay. Let's see what that is. That is a thriller. Well, thriller and lit thick shelf. Okay. We don't have that long of a walk, so let me move the camera. And now for our first crazy angle of the video, here is shelf six. I know it's a little hard to tell, but we're working with what we're working with. So about what? About half, a little over half of the shelf are mystery thrillers. And then the second little bit, a little less than half of this shelf is more like general literary fiction and things like that. So in fairness, I'm scared of this shelf. <laughs> It has all my Stephen King and lit fit. Lit fic is not always my favorite genre. So not just a, just a little bit intimidating. So this shelf has 19 books on it. Hey, Suri. Is Suri off? Step one, turn on Suri. Where is that? Oh, right here. Step one, be a good YouTuber. Okay. Take two. Hey, Siri. Pick a number between one and 19. It's 19. 19. Oh, okay. Thanks for making that easy on me, Siri. All right. 19. The last book in this shelf is Remarkably Bright Creatures by Shelby Van Pelt. I am so on the fence about this. Oh my God. Okay, we'll talk about that later. Okay, starting off interesting as always, I'm going to save my full like synopsis and thoughts to the end right now. I think we're just gonna spin and pick, but that is that book that we just picked, Remarkably Bright Creatures, is a classic example of how I'm a little bit nervous about my lit fix shelf because that is just, it's just not something I'd go for, but we'll, we'll talk about that at the end. So for right now, let's do spin number two. So let's spin three, two, one. Shelf two. Ugh. That's going to be another crazy angle. Oh, it's not too bad, actually. It's not too bad. I might even just get away with, like, zooming you in. All right. But that is another mystery thriller shelf. I'm so not in the mystery thriller mood. All right. Let's go ahead and do it. Here it is. Shelf two. Mystery thrillers. You know, actually, there's a couple books on there I wouldn't be too upset about. So, hey, sorry. Pick a number between 1 and 19. It's 19. Again? It's 19. Okay. Okay. Let's go pick number 19. Oh, okay. All right. Number 19 is Midnight is the Darkest Hour by Ashley Winstead. I have several Ashley Winsteads on my shelf, but this is actually going to be the first one of hers I've picked up. I am much more excited about this one. All right, off to a good start. Spin three. Shelf five. Is that another mystery thriller? It is. It's right here. 
why is it that I feel like I have the least amount of mystery thriller on my shelves, but for some reason the wheel always chooses the mystery thriller shelves? I don't get it. Mathematically it doesn't make sense, but all right, I'm just going to zoom you in again and we're going to see what it picks. All right, there it is, shelf five. This one has, let's see, my Riley Sager, my Alice Feeney, Sally Hepworth, a couple of really good thriller mysteries. So let's see what we're going to do. This shelf has 22 books. Hey, Siri. Mm -hmm. Pick a number between 1 and 22. It's 3. 3. Okay. Let's find out what 3 is. 1, 2, 3. Oh, interesting. Okay, okay, okay. Number three is She Started It by Cyan Cy Cyan Gilbert. This was actually a book of the month book. Obviously, this is Barnes and Noble's version, but this was actually a book selected by Book of the Month, and that's where I heard from it or heard of it and grabbed it. So I am actually very intrigued by this book. Okay, let's get some like different vibes up here, hopefully. Hopefully. Let's see. Let's get some like wild spins or some like special addiction edition shelves. All right. One, two, three. Okay. 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 Shelf 10. Shelf 10 is a fantasy shelf and another crazy angle. So get excited. Let's move the camera. Crazy angle time. It's crazy angle time. Doop doo doop. So shelf number 10 is all the way down here. It is a fantasy shelf and it has 25 books on it. So ooh, upside down. Hey, Suri. Uh -huh. Pick a number between one and 25. That would be 17. 17. Okay. At least we're getting a little variety in the numbers now. Let's see. Oh boy. One, two, right? Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Let's get it out. Oh, oh, oh no, landslide, landslide. Jesus. All right, number 17 is A Court This Cruel and Lovely by Stasia Stark. I believe, if I'm thinking correctly, this might be, is this a, is it YA or is it spicy? I don't know, but I think it's a Beauty and the Beast retelling. So when we read the synopsis at the end, we'll find out. Let's change up our like location a little bit and see if this adds some variety to our spins. So let's screen record, wait the three seconds, and spin number five. We're on spin number five already. All right, spin number five. One. Okay, this could turn out really, really, really well. We do have to go back into the other room, but shelf number one is kind of like my like over one of my over like flow shelves. So it has a lot of different genres and a lot of really, really good books. It also is sometimes where like some of my newer releases kind of get put when I get home from the store. So let's go and see what this has in store. Okay, as you can see, shelf number one is massive. It's my biggest shelf because it runs basically four shelf lengths. So this one has 69 books on it. So, oops. hey, sorry. Mm -hmm. Pick a number between one and 69. It's 21. 21. Okay, let's go figure out what that is. 21, 21, 21. One, two, three, four, five, six. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Wow, okay. All right, all right. So number 21 is in The Lives of Puppets by T.J. Klune. I'm going to be honest with you. I've never read anything by T.J. Klune, but I did not think that when I finally dove into him that this would be the one I started with. I kind of expected to do... Um, what is it? Under the Whispering Door as my first one. This is one of his like newer releases. Not his newest because right now he's doing like the Wolf Song um, series and stuff like that, which I have. But interesting. OK, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not mad about that. This uh, this sack is getting really, really intriguing to me. 
I keep looking at it and I'm like, ooh, what? This is why I love this game. I say this all the time. It wouldn't be necessarily books that I was like specifically prioritizing for merch, but like how interesting is that stack looking? I don't know. You want to know what it is, guys, because I was so sick and I didn't read much last month. I'm feeling like very, like, I don't know. Have you ever been super sick and then you get healthy and you feel like you've lost a month of your life and now that you're healthy again, you're so grateful and excited to be healthy and like living life again? and like getting back out in the world and doing things. I'm feeling so like rejuvenated and just like happy to be healthy that I feel really motivated. Like maybe I'll have this really great reading month this month. I don't know. Or I won't. No pressure. But all right. Spin number six. Oh, nope. Okay. I thought it was gonna be an author last name. It is shelf number 15 which we are not next to. It's in the room again. We hang out in the guest room a lot. All right, let's go to shelf number 15. Wait, I take it back, guys. This is actually exciting because shelf number 15 is actually one of our new shelves. Not necessarily all new books. I had to reorganize and like shuffle things around, but this is one of our new shelves and there are so many great selections on this shelf. So there are 21 books. Hey, Suri. Mm -hmm. Pick a number between one and 21. Number 10. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, this is a repeat. Okay. So number 10 is, what is it called? The Oath We Give, which is book number one, two, three, four, five. Five in The Lies We Steal. What's this? Uh, I forgot what this um series is called. The Hollow Boys. Yes in the Hollow Boys series, which I didn't read, even though this was actually on our TBR once before. So as per our rule, if the book that's selected is in the middle of a series I haven't started, I pick up the next book in the series. So we are putting The Lies We Steal, right? Yeah, The Lies We Steal by Monty J back on our TBR for the second time. Guys, I'm actually really starting to love this TBR, and I'm starting to feel like so excited for March's reads and I'm having a little like idea pop up in my little head and I'm gonna wait until the end of spin 10 to tell you but I'm kind of feeling a little rogue today so we might go a little wild but anyways long story short one two three four five six okay spin number seven Shelf 23. That shelf is right here and it's a romance shelf. Okay, this is not our first rodeo with shelf number 23. This is where all my Kennedy Ryan are, all of my Tessa Bailey, all of my Abby Jimenez, all of my Krista Baccarici, all of my Elle Kennedy. So the chances are we are going to be either starting or continuing a series on this shelf. This has 40 books on it. So, hey, Suri. Mm -hmm. Pick a number between 1 and 40. It's 38. 38. Okay, okay. So I don't even need to count because I took your guys' advice. I know one month people were like, why do you count every single time? <laughs> Muscle memory. But so here's 40, 39, 38. So 38 is Fuel the Fire, which is in the um, Addicted Calloway series. I am not up to that book yet, but I am at Kiss the Sky by Krista and Becca Ritchie. I believe this is where you start deviating from the Addicted series into the Callaway Sisters series. Um, admittedly, a series that I've had a little bit of trouble with, but very excited to see what's in store. I have to take 10 seconds in between spins, what, seven and eight? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah, spin seven and eight, because I'm sitting here, I'm just having so much fun, and I'm so genuinely excited about this way this stack is looking, and I just, like, have this moment of gratitude where I'm like, this is my favorite video to film every single month, and it truly brings so much joy to me, and I hope it brings joy to you guys. I know, I know you guys bring joy to me, so it does bring so much excitement and so much joy to the start of every month, so just having a moment where I was thinking, wow, this is my favorite video. This is so fun. So just a mushy moment. Does anybody else have those just like mushy moments? Sometimes I like look at my kids and have a mushy moment or like have a moment of gratitude and have a mushy moment. So there you go. That was my mushy moment. And now we'll move on to spin eight. Okay. One, two, three. Oh, <gasps> 
genre spin. Oh, okay. You know what? This is interesting because we actually have a pretty good spread of genre. Because we have a lit thick, we have some thriller, we have some fantasy, we just got a romance. So we have a pretty good spread. All right, but you know what? We're going to do our rule and we are going to, here's our genre spin wheel. We are going to randomize. That's what it's going to look like. And let's go ahead and see what genre we're going to get to pick from. Romance. Oh, that's exciting. And you know what? That will keep our stack really, really well rounded because right now of the eight, we only have one romance. This is a very well-rounded stack this month. Okay, awesome. That's great. So at the end, we will choose a romance. All right, let's go back to our spin for TBR wheel. Wait the three seconds and do spin nine. All right, here we go. There it is. One, two, three. Shelf one again. Oh my gosh, okay. Our overflow shelf. It was nice to me last time with the TJ Clune. Actually, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. Oh, yeah, there is. Yeah, there is. But there's a couple of books that would be a little intimidating, but for the most part, I love this shelf. So let's go back to shelf one. Okay, here is shelf one again in all her glory. So technically there was 69 books on this, but then we picked our TJ Clune book. So now there's 68. So hey, Siri. Hey, Siri. Pick a number between 1 and 68. It's 65. 65. Okay, let's go pick it. 65 is actually over in this corner, so let me twist you a little bit. Okay, this is the corner with the last few books. So if we had 68, 68, 67, 66, 65, that is none other than the Queen of Shadows in the Throne of Glass series. So now begins, where do I start my reading order? All right, let's talk about this. Okay, so here is my dilemma and why it's taken me so long. One of the reasons why it's taken me so long to get into the Throne of Glass series by the fabulous Miss Sarah J. Moss because Akatar is one of my favorite series of all time. I love her writing and I know I'm going to be obsessed with this series. That's not the problem. One of the many reasons I've been intimidated is mostly because of the reading order. It is a very hot button issue and I would love to hear your comments down below even though I know this is one of the most like common conversations in the fantasy world. Where, where do I start? Where do I start? Okay, so for anyone who doesn't know, um, Sarah J. Moss actually started Throne of Glass. This is technically book one, okay? She started Throne of Glass when she was a teenager. Well, she finished the series and then wrote a prequel. What was technically a prequel? This is, the Assassin's Blade is just a compilation of four short story novellas. However, then the question becomes, now, if you're starting the series all these years later and it's your first time reading it, do you still start with Throne of Glass or do you start with the four novellas? And this is a very controversial conversation and everyone has different opinions of it. And for the record, in the last few weeks, Miss Sarah J. Moss herself has actually come out and said that her personal preferred reading order is to read Throne of Glass and then books two and three and to read this fourth. However, I have had so many of my friends read this first and say it really added a lot to their experience. And one of those friends is the amazing Reagan from Reagan Reads. She is seriously one of my favorite, favorite booktubers. And I have to tell you now that I've gotten into booktuber and we've, or booktube and we've chatted a little bit more. She is genuinely a light. She is just a ray of sunshine and she is so kind and so sweet. And every single time we speak, she just shows so much interest. And I just, I really, I'm, I, once again, I'm having a mushy moment, but I'm feeling like very appreciative of Reagan. And one of the things that we talked about was the reading order for Throne of Glass and how I have to start Throne of Glass, but where should I start? And she said that she has this very unique perspective in that 
she originally read Throne of Glass first because it was before Sarah J Maas had even written Assassin's Blade. And then she reread the series and started it with Assassin's Blade. So she has this really cool perspective where she's read it both ways. And at the end of our, our slightly lengthy back and forth, she goes, you know what? I think you should read Assassin's Blade first. So I am going to put Assassin's Blade on as my first foray into the Throne of Glass series. And I could not be more intimidated and more excited. <sighs> Spin 10, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, okay. So this is spin nine. I'm getting ahead of myself. Spin nine. Twenty four and twenty four. Wait a minute. This isn't spin nine. Cause we got a genre spin. And I got a romance. So I'm correct. This is spin 10. And spin 10 was our 24 and 24 list. So here is a brand new wheel to this channel. This is our 24 and 24 wheel. If you haven't watched a previous video on this channel, I could go ahead and link it in the descriptions. I did a video where I cataloged 24 books I really wanted to prioritize reading in 2024. I filmed it at the beginning of the year and I just wanted to kind of have a list of books that I really, really wanted to get into in the new year. And this is a wheel with all of those books on it. So let's go ahead and see what book we're getting off this wheel. Of course. Of course it is. Billy Summers. <laughs> okay, on that wheel, that is the book that I am most intimidated by. I have never read Stephen King before. Let me go grab it. Here it is. Billy Summers by Stephen King. I have never read Stephen King before and I know that he is a master of his craft. However, it takes quite a bit of resolution and IQ to read his books from what I've heard and you either love his writing style or you don't. But I have heard that Billy Summers is one of the ones that is arguably the easiest to get into. Um, I will read the synopsis and talk more about it at the end of this video when we're going through our summary, but we are putting Billy Summers on our TBR. <sighs> hey guys, I think I want to be bad. <laughs> we are done with our 10 spins technically. I still have to pick my romance book for the genre spin. I did not forget. However, I don't feel done yet. <laughs> And I think maybe because I am coming off of my worst reading month ever and I am jumping in so excited to read this month, I'm thinking I might just be bad and be rogue, go a little crazy and give myself five extra spins. I am not saying I'm going to read 15 books this month. No. But what I'm saying is because I'm getting back into reading this month, I want to give myself extra options. So I'm trying to decide if I want to do like five regular spins or five like only prompt spins. How about this? Since we're going rogue already, how about we just do five spins and see where it takes us? I think I'm going to let myself have a little bit of freedom on these five spins. So let's go ahead and spin our wheel like regular. But if it happens to be a shelf or a book I don't want, we're just going to kind of pretend it didn't exist. How about that? Can we just go crazy? Does that ruin the game? I don't think so. Because we have our 10. Can you guys support me in my rogueness? Can we just have a little fun this month? I think we could do it. All right. Support me down below, please. <laughs> okay. I've made a decision. I'm not going to spin for shelves, but... We have the following wild reels. We have our 24 and 24 spin wheel. We have our genre spin wheel, which picks a random genre. We have, which we already did. We have our Kindle spin wheel, which picks a book. It has every book that's on my Kindle and it picks a random book for my Kindle. We have our series spin wheel, which co it, co it gives me another book in a series that I already started to continue. It helps me continue my series. We have our book prompts wheel, which has over 500 random prompts on it. And then we have our author first and last wheel. So we've already done our 24 and 24 wheel. 
we've already done our genre spin. So that leaves Kindle series book prompts and author first and last, which happens to be five wheels we haven't spun this month. I say our next five spins are just one spin on each of our random wheels. Can we do that? Can we cheat? All right, let's be crazy. Okay, what are we going to start with? Let's start with our author first and last. So, Let's go ahead and spin for our author's first name first. Okay, author's first name has to start with L. Okay, let's do our author last name. Author's last name has to start with a D. Okay, let's write these all down. Okay, battery died. And I just had one of those moments where I was like, wow, <laughs> I'm old, because I realized that I can no longer sit on my floor like that anymore, like on my knees. Has anyone else had those where you're like, that's humbling. That humbled me. It really did. Okay, so we did our author first and last name spin before my battery died. We've done our genre spin. Should we do let's do our Kindle spin next. Does that sound like a plan? I think it sounds like a plan. So let's go ahead and randomize. All right, ready? One, two, three. This is, this wheel is like so chock full. I can't even see what it says. The winner's curse. Okay, so this I believe is by, is it Marie Rutkowski? And actually, I think I just put this on my Kindle in the last couple of weeks. This was one of the Kindle, like the special deals, like every once in a while books go on sale for like $1.99, $2.99, sometimes like 99 cents. And this book was one of the deals. And I had actually never heard of it, but it sounded amazing. So we are going to go ahead and put the winner's curse on my list. And we'll talk about it more in the summary. So there is our Kindle spin. Now we have to do I should probably write that down, right? Like, I'll forget. So let's grab our pen. Our Kindle spin was the winner's curse. Okay, so next on my little list that I'm writing down is our series spin. So let's go ahead and open our series spin. Okay, we're going to randomize. There it is. Did it randomize? I think it did. Okay, one, two, three. The fact that this is all the series I'm in the middle of is so crazy. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Sidetracked. So this is book two in the Mind F series. This is actually the second time that this has been on my TBR. I didn't get to it the first time. Um, am I super excited about that? No. Am I thinking that because we're rogue anyways, I'm going to spin again because we have a ton of of mystery thrillers on our TBR this month. I don't, I'm not a gigantic mystery thriller reader. I actually don't love the genre. I'm trying to love the genre. And every once in a while, like one out of every eight thrillers I read, like kind of is good, but the other seven irritate the ever living crap out of me. Um, we've talked about this before. So am I in love with having more thrillers on my TBR this month? No. And if the point of these rogue spins, listen to me just like justifying, I'm already cheating. And if the point of these rogue spins are to give me options that will keep me excited about reading, I am not feeling this one this month. Wasn't absolutely in love with the first one. It wasn't bad. I just wasn't in love with it. I just don't feel like this is my journey. So you know what, guys? We're going to continue being wild and we are going to disregard that and spin again. All right. One, two, three. Now that is more like it. Destroy me. Okay, so this is one of the novellas in the Shatter Me series. I'm going to go grab it. 
So here it is. This is actually the entire book is called Unite Me, but the particular um, novella is Destroy Me. So the Unite Me novella contains Destroy Me and Fracture Me, which are the two kind of like short stories. I believe these are written like they're a journal. Are they journals? journal entries or something I don't know um but I really I read Shatter Me last month and I really did enjoy it and I'm super excited to continue in the series and this is super short I think this is like 110 pages and this is something that excites me this is something that I can see myself getting into this month so what's going on up there <laughs> they're so loud every month so this is something I could see myself getting into this month this is definitely going on and this is a much better option Okay, so there is our series spin, which means that our only spin wheel left is our book prompts wheel. I love this wheel. This wheel could either be really nice to me or really difficult. So here it is. We are going to randomize it. And one, two, three. A cowboy character. Okay, so it's a book that has to have a character that is a cowboy. All right, we could do this. We could do this. All right, let's decide on our wilds. So I have our little wild list here. We have our romance book for our genre spin, our first name author, or our author's first name that begins with an L, our author's last name that begins with a D, and then our prompt wheel that has to a book that has a cowboy character. I think we should start with our author first name last name. So let's go ahead and do a little time lapse footage of me going through my shelves and make two piles one with author first name L and one with author last name D and we'll choose from there. have our stacks together. So let's start with the author whose first name begins with L. So I actually I just took a look at our stack as well. And we have three mystery thrillers, five fantasies, one romance and one lit fic, just to keep in mind so far. So the first book I pulled was The Fine Print by Lauren Asher. A romance about a billionaire whose family owns like this world's equivalent to like Disney World or Disneyland I think and from what I understand I think it's like a marriage of convenience trope. Then I pulled The Nanny by Lana Ferguson romance about a girl who has an OnlyFans but applies for a job as a nanny to a wealthy family and finds out that the father of the family or the I don't know if he's a single dad or a father is a subscriber to her OnlyFans. Next I have Better Than the Movies by Lynn Painter. Why a cute romance. Hi guys! <laughs> I'm also here. Always. He's always here. <laughs> Let me do this. Here. Okay, what's Let that about? Let me do this. Sure, what's that about? Romance. It's a YA romance. Do you know what YA stands for? Young adult. So it's for like slightly younger people. 
<laughs> young adult romance. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let me say. So your appendix. Your appendix. <laughs> a your appendix romance. Uh huh. So it's a romance for all of your appendixes. <laughs> Appendices. Yeah. What is the plural of appendix? Appen What's the? I don't know. Your appendices. Your appendixes. <laughs> Second interruption of the video. It Grr. is what it is. <laughs> um, but I don't know much about this book. But I know it's a cute little like YA romance and. YA romance is kind of hit or miss for me. Like, I'm 35. I do feel like sometimes YA is a little too YA for me, if you're getting what I'm putting down, picking up what I'm putting down. Um, but I've really heard amazing things about Lynn Painter's writing, so. I also grabbed The Gilded Cage by Lynette Noni. I read The Prison Healer a, a two or three months ago at this point, and I did actually really, really enjoy it. Um, this is the second book in the series, but basically what The Prison Healer was about is about a girl who has abilities to heal people who works at a prison, go figure, and how she gets involved in the royalty of her world. So I have been wanting to move on, so this could be a really good option. I also grabbed These Hollow Vows by Lexi Ryan. I believe this is another like YA fantasy, but I don't know much about it. Okay, so this book, I actually, if you watched my newest haul video that actually came out within the last few days, I picked this up this week. This is A Feather So Black by Lyra Celine, and this is about um, Fia, who's a rare changeling. A hidden gate to the folk realm is opened, and then I think there's a little bit of like a love triangle, so it's like a love triangle fantasy. I grabbed Seven X's by Lucy Vine, Seven Miss Chances, Who Was the One Who Got Away. I have no idea what this is about, but it's a little romance. I think this is adult romance. This one's a serious contender, okay? The Bromance Book Club by Lissa K. Adams. This is about a man whose relationship either fails or is failing, and in order to fix or get back his wife, girlfriend, whatever it is, he joins a book club where a bunch of men read romances to try to think of things in their, you know, partners, I guess, like perspective and fix their relationships. And I've heard it's really good. I grabbed Pestilence by Laura Thalassa. I don't know much about it other than it's a fantasy retelling of the Four Horsemen, the story of the Four Horsemen. Then I grabbed Shadow and Bone by Lee Bardugo. I have been wanting to make my way through the Shadow and Bone series because I'm dying to get into Six of Crows. And this is on my 24 and 24 list. And considering I'm super behind on that list, this might be a serious contender. Okay, so I'm staring at our piles and we have a lot of fantasy and romance. So like I usually do, I think what we're going to do is we're going to play the game of elimination, right? So let's eliminate from our stacks what I'm kind of not feeling. So from my romance stacks, the fine print, the nanny, better than the movies, seven X's and the bromance book club. So right off the jump, I'm going to get rid of seven X's. Okay. I'm also going to put down the fine print and the nanny, the fine print because I am still on the second book of the Collided series, which is Lauren Asher's Others uh, series, and I don't know that I want to start the Dreamland Billionaire series before I finish that. And then the nanny... Oh, ooh, I don't know. You know what? I'm rethinking this. I have Kiss the Sky over there. So I'm actually going to eliminate the fine print and better than the movies. I think that's what I'm going to do. So for my narrowed down romance list, I'm between the nanny and the bromance book club. So let's do the same thing with our fantasy. Okay. So for fantasy, oh, geez. I have the gilded cage, these hollow vows, feather so black, shadow and bone and pestilence. So right off the jump, I'm going to eliminate these hollow vows and pestilence. Just not feeling those as much. So we have the gilded cage, feather so black, and shadow and bone. As excited I am about feather so black, I think I can wait on it and I should make some progress on these. 
So basically our narrowed down list is The Nanny, The Bromance Book Club, The Gilded Cage, and Shadow and Bone. I liked The Prison Healer, but I wasn't like in love with it. And I've heard super conflicting things about this. Shadow and Bone would be starting another series. So with the Romance Book Club. Okay, so I think I'm between the Nanny and the Gilded Cage. And I think I'm going to go with the Nanny because right now I only have one romance. I do have to pick another romance, but I have five fantasies. So I think I'm going to give myself, I'm going to like play the odds here and I'm going to give myself The Nanny by Lana Ferguson for my author beginning with the letter L. So next we had author whose last name begins with D and I had a lot of options for these. So for my more romancy type of options, I have To Have and to Heist by Sarah Desai. I have no idea what this is about. It says to exonerate her best friend, one woman must mastermind a jewelry heist during the wedding of the season in this hilarious romantic comedy caper. Okay, so initial impressions is romantic comedy is a tough genre for me. It's either done right or it's done in a way that makes me cringe really hard and it's not enjoyable. So we'll see about that one. I also have Float Plan by Trish Dollar. I have seen very 50-50 mixed things about this. I know, was it Lauren from Lauren's Reading Quarter that really liked this? I think it was her. I don't remember. I think it was her that really liked this. Sometimes you have to lose your way to find what you're looking for. Since the loss of her fiance, Anna has been shipwrecked by grief until a reminder goes off about a trip they were supposed to take together. Impulsively, Anna goes to sea in their sailboat, intending to complete the voyage alone. Okay. Then I have More of Us to the West by Trinity Dunn. This is one of my 24 and 24, and it is an absolute brick. I think it's, God, how many pages is this? Like 600? So it's a big book. And this is about a plane a woman who's on a plane crash and it like gets her stranded on an island or something but I think one of her exes or something happens to be aboard I don't know it sounds really really good it is a brick though am I gonna have time to read something like this this month but man have I been wanting to get to it okay okay so this next book is actually the second in the series but I only have the first one on my kindle so I'm just holding it up so I also grabbed what would be Twin Crowns. This is Cursed Crowns. This is the second one. I grabbed Twin Crowns by Catherine Doyle and Catherine Weber. This is a YA fantasy about like two sisters divided, I think, from running a kingdom. So I could go that way, a little YA fantasy. I grabbed Radiance by Grace Draven. Um, this is an indie published book. I've heard really good things about it. I think it's about like a demon a non-essential spare heir to the throne secured many times over and a noble woman of no importance a niece of the gory king so fantasy romance then i grabbed curse the curse of saints by kate dramas has she been sent to save the world or destroy it i haven't really heard much about this book to be honest with you it says she was not a beacon of light she was not a savior of realms if the gods had chosen her they had chosen wrong as an elite spy in the Queen's third in command, Aya has dedicated herself to a life of discipline and duty, using her God's given ability to keep deep, dark magic from ever returning to the realm. Her oath ensures she will always act to protect those she fights alongside, including Will, the Queen's enforcer, and Aya's bitter rival. So I'm sensing a little fantasy like enemies to lovers. I also grabbed Legendborn by Tracy Dion. I know this did have a pretty viral moment. I think it was like last year. It says, after her mother dies in an accident, 16-year-old Bree Matthews wants nothing to do with her family memories or childhood home. A residential program for bright young high schoolers at UNC Chapel Hill seems like the perfect escape until Bree witnesses a magic attack her very, her very first night on campus, a flying demon feeding on human energies. So another, like, fantasy demon. Okay. This next one is Barbarian Alien. I believe this is the, this series is so huge. I'm, I grabbed it because I, I believe it's the second one. Yeah. So this is Barbarian Alien. This is the second book in the 
um, Ice Planet Barbarian series, and I told you guys when I read this in one of my videos that this is like a guilty pleasure of mine now. I actually really enjoyed Ice Planet Barbarians, so this is a pretty high contender. I also grabbed Fear the Flames by Olivia Rose Darling. This also had a pretty viral TikTok moment, but it's another big book. This is like 600 pages as well. Um, I think, is this YA? Princess, Prisoner, Runaway Queen, Eloin Atara, Princess of Imaroth, came into the world like a firestorm made flash. A princess with a link to five dragons should have been a blessing to her kingdom, but her blessing became her curse. The little girl in shackles became a knife-wielding woman with a thirst for retaliation. Even if it ignites her temper. Okay, so then um, snarky commander Caden Velas of Varareth, her father's enemy kingdom, offers her a deal she's been dreaming of for years. Even if he ignites her temper like no other. So it sounds like it's a fantasy romance. Doesn't sound very YA, but sounds like it's a fantasy romance with dragons. And then last but not least, I picked up The Luminaries by Susan Denard. This is the Illumicrate edition. It's beautiful. I don't really know mo much about this. The forest is dangerous for a luminary untrained. Hemlock Falls isn't like other towns. You won't find it on a map. Your phone won't work here, and the forest outside town might just kill you. Winnie Wednesday wants nothing more than to join the Luminaries, the ancient order that protects Winnie's town and the rest of humanity from the monsters and nightmares that rise in the forest of Hemlock Falls every night. Monsters in the forest, and she wants to dry, join like a secret society? Okay, so once again, let's do our process of elimination. I've got to be honest with you, I'm going to eliminate both of these. I'm going to eliminate To Have and To Heist and Float Plan. These just, I don't think, are going to be, like, priority this month. I'm also going to eliminate More of Us to the West. I think that we're already putting a ton of books on our um, TBR, and I just can't see myself reading something this big. I am going to eliminate Radiance and Twin Crowns. Just not feeling it this month. I'm going to eliminate Curse of Saints and Legendborn. Once again, just... They're not the ones that are most calling to me this month. So now we are between our final three, which is the Luminaries, Ice Planet, or Barbarian Alien, the second Ice Planet Barbarians book, and Fear the Flames. Eliminating Fear of the Flames, just similar reason as More of Us to the West because it's 600 and something pages. And I just don't think I'm going to get to that this month. Barbarian Alien or the Luminaries? Barbarian Alien. I just want to. I want to get back, like, into this world. So this is the one. So now if we're picking our book with a cowboy character, I had two options right off the top of my head. So the first one was Swift and Saddled. I recently got and sent this by Lila Sage, I should say. I recently got sent this arc. Um, I think it comes out, is it April? Or at the, end of May, uh, at the end of March. I have this arc on my Kindle and I really loved, this is the second book in this series. I really loved the first book, which was Done and Dusted. It was really, really good. So I could do that one. Or I could do the second book in the Chestnut Spring series by Elsie Silver, which is Heartless. Working as a nanny for the world's grumpiest single dad should have been simple. I think I'm going to do Heartless. And last but not least, for our genre spin, I get to pick just any romance. Okay, I'm going to go look. I'm super conflicted. So I have two that I've narrowed it down to. So these were the two that are like most calling to me. I once again grabbed the Bromance Book Club. There's something about this book that I just, I'm really intrigued by. So Bromance Book Club. And then this one, I can't decide if I'm cheating or not. I picked up Bride by Allie Hazelwood. I don't, this is romanticy. I don't know if I, is it cheating to call this a romance? Because it's a wolf and a vampire, like smutty romance. A marriage of convenience. I don't know, is this cheating? I think, is this more fantasy, wolf, vampire, marriage of convenience? 
right, I'm not going to cheat anymore. I've already cheated enough this video, although maybe that's an excuse to cheat. I'm going to do it. I'm going to put Bride on our TBR this month, and I think Romanticy is a romantical fantasy. <laughs> so I think it counts. Okay, so there it is, 15 books for February. So let's do a quick recap of our unhinged TBR this month. So the first book we got was Remarkably Great Pre Creatures by Shelby Van Pelt. This book is about a woman who has gone through a divorce and she is either volunteering or working at an aquarium and strikes up a friendship with an octopus from one of the exhibits named Marcellus. I don't know exactly what's going to go from there, but this is lit thick and I've heard it's really cute. So adorable. Next is Midnight is the Darkest Hour by Ashley Winstead. I think I honestly this is her newest release and I have no idea what it's about. It says a killer haunts a small southern town and two outcasts, the preacher's daughter and the boy from the wrong side of the tracks, hold the key to uncovering the truth. It's a twisted tale of murder, obsessive love, and the beastly urges that lie dormant within all of us, even the God-fearing folk of Bottom Springs, Louisiana. Okay. Next, we spun and got She Started It by Cyan Cian Gilbert. I think this is about, like, a girl who gets invited to an island by an old friend or something. It sounds kind of weird. It says the party of a lifetime is nothing like what they expected. Annabelle, Esther, Tanya, and Chloe are best friends, or were, as children. They drifted apart in adulthood, but shared secrets have kept them bonded for better or worse, even as their childhood dreams haven't quite turned out as they'd hoped. Then one day, they receive a wholly unexpected invitation from another old friend. Poppy Greer has invited them all to her extravagant bachelorette party, three days of white sand cocktails and relaxation on a luxe private island in the Bahamas. But none of them has spoken to Poppy in years. Poppy's Instagram pics show that the girl they used to consider the weakest link in their group has definitely made good and made money. Curiosity gets the better of them. Besides, who can turn down a posh, all-expenses-paid vacation on a Caribbean island? If I don't know her, I'm not going. Sorry, not happening. The first-class flight and the island's accommodations are just as opulent as expected, even if the scene island provide, scenic island provides more remote even if the scenic island proves more remote than they'd anticipated. Quite remote, in fact, with no cell service and no other guests. The women quickly discover they've underestimated Poppy and each other. As their darkest secrets are revealed, the tropical adventure morphs into a terrifying nightmare. Little strange, but cool. <sighs> okay, next we have Billy Summers by Stephen King. I think this is a book about an assassin, if I remember correctly. Chances are, if you're a target of Billy Summers, two immutable truths apply. You'll never even know what hit you, and you're really getting what you deserve. He's a killer for hire and the best in the business, but he'll do the job only if the assignment is a truly bad person. Okay, let's see what Stephen King has to offer. Then we got In the Lives of Puppet by Puppets by TJ Klune. I'm so conflicted on whether or not I will like this author's writing. Seems kind of a little whimsical almost. It says, T.J. Kluwen invites you deep into the heart of a peculiar forest on the extraordinary journey of a family assembled from spare parts. In a strange little home built into the branches of a grove of trees lies three robots, fatherly inventor android Giovanni Lawson, a pleasantly sadistic nurse machine, and a small vacuum desperate for love and attention. Victor Lawson, a human, lives there too. So a man living with an android and two robots. One is a vacuum. That's kind of cute. Okay. Their family hidden and safe. Then one day, Vic salvages and repairs an unfamiliar android labeled Hap, and he learns of a shared dark past between Hap and Geo, a past spent hunting humans. Okay. It does sound really cute. Then we got a repeat TBR book. This is the second time this has popped up on a TBR, and this is The Lies We Steal by Monty J, Hollow Boys Book One. And for the life of me, I've, I've read the synopsis of this book so many times, I still have no idea. What is going on with this hair back here? It's driving me insane. We're going to just tuck this. There you go. Anyways, homey and homely. That's our brand. It's still, you know what, guys? It's there and it's not going anywhere. I don't know what to tell you. So just ignore her. She's not cooperative today. 
Okay, so it says, it's been months since the day we stood above that empty grave that sunk of burnt flesh and secrets. All of us were dressed to the nines, one of us wearing a wedding dress, a day that was supposed to mark the beginning of a new adventure. It marked the bitter end of our vengeance. We have done things that have marked our souls for eternity, but it didn't start out that way, not for me. It all started there, the place I could find in my sleep. Hollow Heights University in the macabre, somber seaside town of Ponderosa Springs, a college for prestige, wealthy children to receive the highest education, a town drowning in treachery and secrets that became our damnation. But it wasn't the forest surrounding the grounds or even the mysterious hidden mausoleum that haunted me. It was them. The ones that lurked in the night, things so wicked, so twisted, so evil, they would become the rulers of my nightmares, the Hollow Boys. Sounds like a little bit of like dark academia in there. I know every single time I read that, I'm super intrigued by it. I just have never picked it up. Then we have the infamous The Assassin's Blade by Sarah J. Moss. This would be the start of my Throne of Glass adventure. I am choosing to read The Assassin's Blade first. I have heard the most recommendations from people who have read it both ways, and I think this will be the way that works for me. So I, once again, I'd love to hear down below if you agree or disagree with this and why. I don't know. I'm just rolling with it, guys. I'm going with the flow here. So this is the like prequel, quote unquote, um, novella. It is four, I believe, short stories that kind of give you a little bit of like extra information that go along with the rest of the series. But I have wanted to start the series for so long and I'm so excited. While we're on the track of novellas, I'm also going to be reading Destroy Me, which is one half of Unite Me. Um, honestly, I might bang this one out first because it's only like 100 pages. So why not start with a bang in March, right? So this is the first novella in the Shatter Me series. I'm pretty sure that it goes like book novella, book novella, book novella. There's a lot of them. So I think it went Shatter Me number one, then it's going to be Destroy Me number two, then the next book, which I think is like, what is it? Is it Ignite Me? I forget what the second one is, but, and then you read Fracture Me, which is the second novella in this book. So going with that one. Up next is A Court So Cruel and Lovely by Stasia Stark. I think if I'm remembering correctly, this is a Beauty and the Beast retelling. It says, For years when I fell asleep, I dreamed of a man with blazing green eyes and a cruel smile. The day I meet him, the ruthless mercenary leaves me for dead. Just hours after humans are born, the gods take what little power we have. In return, they protect our borders from the vicious, merciless fae. This is not a Beauty and the Beast retelling. I don't think. I think I was wrong. Okay. The humans who manage to keep their powers are known as the corrupt, and they are burned. When my forbidden power is discovered, I'm forced to flee my tiny village in the life I adore. Like, a little bit of powerless vibes there, by Lauren Roberts. To survive, I make a desperate bargain with the mercenary who abandoned me at my weakness. Our deal is simple. I'll help him and his mysterious friends sneak into the city, and he'll help me learn to wield the strange dark power I've always kept hidden. The power that may just be the key to my survival. But the ruthless mercenary is hiding secrets of his own. Secrets that threaten the safety of everyone I love. Secrets that could tear this kingdom and perhaps even this world apart. So I was, as per usual, completely incorrect about this. It has nothing to do with the beauty, beauty and the Beast. I don't know what I was thinking, but this sounds really, really good. Then we have Kiss the Sky, which is the fourth book in the Addicted Calloway series. And I think this is where the Calloway portion of it starts. I don't know whose book this is. I think this is Rose and Connor's book. And I know a lot of people love this book. And I'm really hoping that I'm one of them because I've got to be honest with you guys. This series has been severely underwhelming to me. And I know, I know that's bad to say because this has such a cult following and so many people love these characters and like this book. But the only character that I could even come close to stomaching is Lo. I hate everyone else, including Rose and Connor. I didn't like them. I thought Connor was kind of spineless and I think Rose is a bitch and she's just mean. She's just mean to Connor. And Connor is like this spineless little jellyfish who like needs to stand up for himself. So maybe that'll happen in this book and then I'll end up loving it. Who knows? But haven't been a gigantic fan of books one through three. So hopefully four turns it around for me or else maybe I'm done. I don't know. Then we have The Nanny by Lana Ferguson. This was our book for author whose first name begins with L. And like I said, this book, I kind of gave a summary. This book is about a girl who had an OnlyFans and she needs to make a little bit extra money and she goes to be a nanny at this person's house and finds out that he's a subscriber on her OnlyFans and I'm assuming spicy time happens. <laughs> I don't know. I should really write summaries for books, guys. This is like one of my talents for sure. So yeah, spicy romance. So after that, we spun for our Kindle spin and we got The Winner's Curse by Marie Rutkowski. 
and I'm going to read the synopsis here. Okay, so I think this is a middle, no, it's a YA, because it's for ages 12 to 18. So this is a YA book. It says, winning what you want may cost you everything you love. They were never meant to be together. As a general's daughter, 17-year-old Kestrel enjoys an extravagant and privileged life. Aaron has nothing but the clothes on his back. Then Kestrel makes an impulsive decision that binds Aaron to her. Though they try to fight it, they can't help but fall in love. In order to be together, they must betray their people, but to be loyal to their country, they must betray each other. Set in a new world, The Winner's Curse is a story of rebellion, duels, ballroom dances, wicked rumors, dirty secrets, and games where everything is at stake. And the gamble is whether you will keep your head or lose your heart. Doesn't sound too bad. Okay, next up we got Barbarian Alien, which is the second book in the Ice Planet Barbarian series. I don't know what happens in this one. I'm assuming it follows another one of the characters. But in Barbarian Alien, basically these girls are abducted to be trafficked by these, these like human girls on Earth are abducted from Earth by these trafficking aliens. And there's a technical difficulty with the ship on the way to wherever their traffickers are bringing them to be sold. And they have to eject the girls section of the ship while they go and get parts and come back for them. And they eject them onto this ice island and they end up meeting like natives from the island and smut ensues. So I'm assuming this is just going to follow one of the other girls from the ship. But I'm kind of addicted to it. And I'm really excited. It's really good. <laughs> then for our book featuring a character who is a cowboy, I chose Heartless by Elsie Silver. This is the second book in the Chestnut Spring series. I loved Flawless. I think it was a five star read for me last year. So I'm really excited to continue on with the series. So this is working as a nanny for the world's grumpiest single dad should have been simple, except I can't keep my eyes off of him and he keep, can't keep his hands off of me. That sounds really good. Last but finally not least is something that I think I cheated on. I mean, I guess a romanticy is a romance, but we have Bride by Allie Hazelwood. This says a vampire bride and an alpha werewolf form a dangerous alliance in this enthralling new paranormal romance. It says it's a romance, guys. So I say it counts. However, we are not done here because I still have one last thing to talk about. We are just full of surprises in this video. We have one last surprise in this video. We're just full of them. We are full on rogue in this video and I am loving it. So I have a subscriber named Nellie. I'm going to go ahead and post her YouTube up here. She is seriously the sweetest, cutest little thing and I love her so much. She is so interactive down in the comments. She's so supportive. She always has the nicest things to say and one thing that I especially adore about her is that when she writes comments to me, she is so well thought out. Her recommendations are great. She has the greatest comments ever and in my 24 books to prioritize in 2024, I mentioned that one of the books I wanted to get to this year was Aragon by Christopher Paolini. And Nellie said that she also wants to read Aragon in 2024 and had the fabulous idea that we should do our first subscriber read along together. And I'm so excited to announce that Nellie did all the hard work. She's amazing. And she broke down what chapters we are going to read along together every single week. So if you want to get involved in our read along as well, please comment down below or message me on Instagram and I'll go ahead and I'll send you what chapters to read for each week and you can kind of read along with us and then we can talk on Instagram and in the comments about what we think about this book. Maybe we can have even like a little like some sort of live that I can do and we can discuss. So comment down below what you guys want to do or message me on Instagram and let me know if that works. But Nellie, thank you so much for inviting me to do this with you. I'm so excited. Not only have I wanted to read this book forever, but reading it with you is going to make it a hundred thousand times more special. So thank you so much. And I'm so excited that I get to put a 16th book, Aragon, onto our TBR this month. And there it is are completely unhinged, completely unrealistic, 100% delusional March TBR stack. I tried to pick this up and it's too tall. It all fell over and it was a big old mess. So this is it. I am not promising that I'll read all 15 in March. That would be one hell of a reading month. I have never done that before. But what I am promising is that I'm feeling motivated right now and I'm going to continue that motivation for the rest of the month. So this stack right here is hopefully going to help me do that. 
Nelly, thank you so much for a second time for inviting me to do the Aragon read along with you. I am so beyond blessed to have people that have similar interests in this community and who invite me to do such fun things. And if any of you have a buddy read along you'd like to suggest for the coming months, drop it in the comments down below because if you're motivated, I'm motivated and I would love to hang out with you guys and do some read alongs. So please, whatever you are looking to read and that you're having a little bit of like motivational problems starting, drop them down below. We could probably find a month we can make it work because I love reading with you guys. Let's do it together. So if you have stayed this far, please comment the, oh, the swords emoji for the assassin's blade. I love that. And then since you're here, you might as well do all the YouTubey things like comment, subscribe, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye guys.